I'm going to show you how you can collect signed contracts using eSignatures.io integrated with Airtable. So you'll be able to design templates for documents that you'd like to get signed, and then you'll be able to send a URL to the person who, who you want to sign. You'll be able to collect the signed document and store it back into Airtable all automatically through these, this extension. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like in Airtable. So we've got you know, a table with the uh, people's names, their emails. We've got this URL here. This is a unique URL for each record. When the when you give this URL to a person, they'll be able to sign the document through this URL. Um, we've got a contract ID. This is a, a, a unique code for each signed record where we'll be able to tell the exact contract ID that was signed and we can cross match this in eSignatures.io. We'll see the actual signed document stored in Airtable. You'll see the signature, for example, down here with all the correct information. Um, and we'll be able to add information from that record back into the document. So for example, this is this date that comes from Airtable is actually filled into the document itself here. The three months thing that you're seeing here and this list, they're all coming from values from that record itself. So you'll be able to design your template for this for the contract you'd, you'd like to get signed, and then you'll be able to substitute information from Airtable into that template. Let's run through a contract here to see what it looks like to sign a contract. So we'll see the contract in front of us. We can read it, etc. cetera. Um, this is fully designed by us, and we'll be able to sign. And last thing here is a sort of a two-factor authentication for the email to make sure that this is actually the person who they uh, who says they are. Um, let's see, so I got the verification code through the email, so I'm just gonna type it here, um, 813, cool. So sign it, and the reason why there's a lot of sort of um, interesting extra steps with this service is because they're trying to make this as legally binding as possible. So this is fully legally binding. It definitely uh, contains information that will sort of has has a trace of the person who signed. So for example, when I click here, when I click here to see the signed document, I can go down here and I can see the signature, I can see the exact time, I can for sure know that this is the email of that person because there was a two-factor authentication and more steps here to make sure that that is in fact the person who 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 signed the document. Cool. So, yeah, like I said, the signed contract gets saved in Airtable. But another cool part of this extension is that the URL that was initially used for signing, when that person opens it again, they can actually view the document that they signed. So it's sort of great for reference where they can keep that URL, be able to see their signed document. Um, yeah. So now I'm going to show you how you would set this extension up. Start by filling up your user API key. Click here to find that. Select your base, select your table. Next is the e-signature setup get the secret token from here. Um, if you don't have any signatures account, start by signing up. Next, we'll need the template ID. This tells us which contract we're signing. So let's go over here. In my case, I want to use this template. Um, and you'll notice that the template ID is right here. So I want to copy this and I want to paste it right here. Next is the contract ID field. So as, as you saw earlier, this is a field that contains that unique ID for that contract. If you don't have that yet, you'll want to create a new single line text field, name it something like contract ID or something, um, then sync your base and then select that field in Airtable. So in my case, I already have the field, so I'm just gonna select it. It's gonna be contract ID. Next is the field where the signed documents will be. So make an attachments field in Airtable, sync your base and then select that um, signed document field. This is where we'll store the, the signed document. Next is the signer name. In my case, it's going to be the field name and the signer's email, which is going to be email in my case. Next here is the custom field. So remember earlier how I said you can get values from the record back into the document like this, right? So what you'll notice is this date right here in the template is defined as this and the months are defined as this. So what we want to do is whenever you want to add a custom field, there are two steps to do. First, you'll want to add the names of the custom fields that you're using. In my case, it's going to be begin date, months, and rate. Second, once you've added them to custom fields, second is you want to copy those names and then exactly put them within the document between two 
squarely braces. So I can go over here, copy this, and I'll show you exactly what I mean here. So if, if, if the starting point for me was this, I would do two, I would paste the name and do two again. And yeah, so that's how you'd be able to substitute information from the record straight into the contract. Cool. So yeah, let's go ahead and save this. Um, there are two last things I want to talk about now. First of all, when you're testing this extension, you want to run this in test mode. Because of this, by default, this extension always runs in test mode. So the signed documents you'll see say, you know, demo, demonstration, etc. They, they'll they'll have like big watermarks on them. And the reason why we do this is because those documents that have the watermarks on them are generated for free. And these are generated for testing purposes. We want to make sure that the full system works with the testing document before we turn this on. Because once you turn this on, each signed contract will cost you that um, the, 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 the price for each contract that these signatures that IO charges for. So set up the entire setup, make sure it works. And then after you've made sure everything works, you'll want to turn this on so that it's no longer in test mode and then save. But in our case, we're gonna start with just test mode. Okay, one last very, very important step here. You'll want to add this URL as your webhook URL in eSignatures account, in your eSignatures account. So we'll open up this account. I will click on API, and then I will paste the eSignatures URL here. So that webhook, and then I'll update that URL. This is extremely important. I can't emphasize this enough. This is how the, doc the signed document gets added back into Airtable. So this is extremely important. Never change that endhook URL, uh, that endpoint. Never, um, you know, never do anything with it because that's how the signed document makes it back to your table. Cool. So let's go ahead and test this now. Um, the next step here is to copy this formula. And once we copy this formula, we can add a new formula field in Airtable. In my case, I already have the field, but what you'll want to do is you'll want to go here, add a new formula field, paste that formula here, and then just um, finish it up. But in my case, I already have this field. So this field here, is the field we'll be using. Now, this formula will give us that unique URL that we can send to people. And yeah, so we've just tested it. This is the full setup. This is all you need to be able to use this extension. One last important thing that I want to mention here. So I've explained what contract ID does. Now, part of the reason why contract ID is saved in Airtable is that you can you know, associate the record with the actual signed contract and also be able to have this feature where you can open up the record and see the signed document. Now, if I duplicate a record, you'll see that the contract ID is the same as the last record, right? So what does that mean? That means if I open this, I'm no longer signing a new document. I'm actually opening that same contract. This is extremely important because that means if I duplicate a record, what I'll want to do is actually remove this contract ID if I want to generate a new contract. So in order to generate a new contract, the contract ID field always has to be blank, right? So we have to remove the signed document of the contract ID in order to be able to re-sign, like to sign again, um, a, a, new, a new record. So if I do this here, and I'll just do this quickly here to, to show you what I exactly mean. Um, let's see, so I'm getting this verification code here, 4449. And okay, so we sign it. Oops, I didn't do this part. Cool, we sign it. And yeah, so just wanted to show you this part. So notice how every time we sign it, it's a new contract ID. So even though we duplicated the record, we always want to make sure we cl clear those fields in order to be able to actually see the records. Now, another part that I want to highlight here is notice how the contract, the signed contract took a while here to, to come in. Don't be too scared if you sign a contract and you don't see it show up for like a, let's say a minute or two if it doesn't show up for five minutes um or something like that then please do make sure that you have set up that webhook url correctly but we do expect that you know for the generated contract to be saved here it'll take maybe a minute or two 